In today's video, we are going to talk about solving systems of linear equations algebraically. So in the first video of the chapter, we looked at solving systems graphically. So we looked at linear systems. We had two linear equations and found the point of intersection. Now today, we're going to solve those same systems algebraically. So again, we're going to have two lines and we're going to try to determine where they intersect. There's two different methods we have to solve algebraically. First one is substitution, second one is elimination. You've seen both of these before, so we're going to review each and do a few example problems together. The idea with substitution is that you are going to solve one of your equations for x or y, and then you're going to substitute into the other. So if we'll notice the two equations we have, in the bottom equation, I can very easily solve for x. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add 4y to both sides. So I get x is equal to negative 2 plus 4y. OK, now the method name tells us what we need to do. Substitution, so we need to substitute. In the top equation where we see an x, we are going to write all of what we got for x. So we used the second equation, now we're going to go to the first equation. We get 2x plus 3y equals 7. Instead of x though, we're going to put that expression that we got. So we have negative 2 plus 4y. Okay, so distribute your 2, and we get negative 4 plus 8y plus 3y equals 7. If I add 8y and 3y, I get 11y. If I add 4 to both sides, I also get 11. Dividing by 11, I get y equals 1. Now, I'm not finished. Don't forget that. I still need to find x. So I have a few different options. I can plug y into any of the other equations to find x. So I can plug y into this equation, this equation, or this equation. Now, since I'm looking for x, I think my best option is going to be to plug in here. So I get x is equal to negative 2 plus 4 times 1, which is negative 2 plus 4. So I get an x value of 2. Now, please remember to express your answer the way we did in the first video. So x comma y. Remember, this is the point where the two lines intersect. It's also, algebraically, this is the only point that is true for both equations at the same time. So that's substitution. Solve for one of your variables and plug into the other equation. Elimination, this is when you want to eliminate one of your variables. So you want one variable. have the same coefficient, so the same number out in front in both equations. Okay, so if we take a look at the same system we just solved, I have two options here. I can eliminate my x's or my y's. Now, I need either the same number in front of those x's or the same number in front of those y's. It's up to me. In this case, I'm going to eliminate my x's. So my first equation, I'm going to keep the way that it is. Second equation, I need there to be a 2 in front of this x. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. Now if you remember, we also need them to be opposite signs. So we need a positive 2 and a negative 2. So I'm going to multiply by a negative. So I get negative 2x plus 8y is equal to 4. So what I'm doing is multiplying this entire equation by that negative 2. Now we're going to add down. Those x's cancel, so we get 11y is equal to 11. That's how we know that we're on the right track. With elimination, you are eliminating a variable. You're getting rid of one of the variables. So divide by 11, and we get y equals 1 again. Same thing we did with the first problem. We can plug that 1 into either equation. I'm going to plug it into the second one. So I get x minus 4y is equal to negative 2. So 
So I get x minus 4 is equal to negative 2. If I add 4 to both sides, I get x equals 2. So again, write the answer the way we expect it as a point, 2 comma 1. So again, this is the point where the two lines intersect. It's also the only point that is true for both equations. So that is the gist of solving systems algebraically. You will need to know both methods. Sometimes I will tell you a specific method to use. Sometimes I will allow you to choose. So you do need to know both. We got a few more examples to look at. First example being example number one. Okay, so this one we are going to solve using substitution. So in this case, we need to solve one of the equations for x or y and substitute into the other. Top equation, I'll notice, I can solve for x really easily. So that's what I'm going to do. If I add 2y to both sides, I get x is equal to 2 plus 2y. So now I need to substitute into the other equation, not the same equation, the other equation. This will go in for x in our second equation. So in the second equation now, we have 3y plus x, but our x is 2 plus 2y is equal to negative 3. Okay, so if I combine those like terms, I get 2 plus 5y is equal to negative 3. If I subtract 2, I get 5y is equal to negative 5. So y is equal to negative 1. Negative 1. Be careful. If you find y wrong, you're going to need x wrong too. So I still need to find x. I have a few options for what equation I can use. I can use either of the two original equations, or I can use this x equation. I'm going to use the x equation. So this is going to be plugged back in. So I get x equals 2 plus 2y. So I get 2 plus negative 2, so my x is 0. So my point is 0, negative 1. Now, I want to remind us real quick how to check our answers. How to check our answers. To check your answer, plug that point into both of your original equations, these two. Point should work in both. So let's check real quick. I get 0 minus 2y is equal to 2. So 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. That works. I don't, I can't stop there. I gotta look at the second one too. I have 3y plus x is equal to negative 3, which also works. I don't require that for every problem, but that's a good strategy for you all to use on homework checks or learning checks or checkpoints, just to make sure that you've gotten the correct answer. There's a quick note I need to remind us of before we do this example too. So let's write this at the bottom. There are two unusual cases or two different cases that you could get when you are solving a system algebraically. So besides getting a point, sometimes when you're solving a system, you might end up with some statement that is always true. Like you might end up with 0 equals 0, 4 equals 4, something like that. You could also end up with a statement that is always false. So you might end up with 0 equals 4, 7 equals 11. These two have special meanings. In the case where you end up with a true statement, this means that you have infinitely many solutions. So if you think about graphically, we ended up with infinitely many solutions when we had the same line. So anytime you are solving a system, if you get a true statement or a statement that's always true, it means you have infinitely many solutions. So you have the same line. If you end up with a statement that's false, that means that there is no solution. Now thinking about graphically, two lines, if there's no solution, so if they don't intersect, that tells us that we have parallel lines. So these are things to keep in mind for when you are doing your classwork. Now let's return to example number two. Example two, you are solving the system using elimination. 
Okay, so we need either need to eliminate those x's or those y's. We need the same number in front, but with opposite signs. So you can choose whether you want to eliminate x or y. In this case, I would like you to complete this example. So you're going to take a minute to pause the video and try the example and come back when you are finished. Hopefully you gave this one a try. I will tell you that the answer is negative 4, 2. When you turn these notes in, I expect this problem to be done. So if you haven't done it, you need to go back and do it. At this point, the mandatory portion of the video is done. If you would like a few extra examples, you can stay on and go to the next page, and I will go over two extra examples with you. If you've learned the material well and you are confident with solving algebraically, then you are done and you may turn in your notes. Again, if you want to stay on and see two extra examples, please flip to the next page with me. Okay, we're gonna do two extra examples. Example three says, solve the systems using any method. So I'm gonna look at this first one. Now, the first thing I notice right away is these fractions, which I don't like. So I'm gonna to try to get rid of the fractions so I don't have to deal with those anymore. Top line, I'm going to multiply by 2, multiply everything by 2, and I'll show you why in a minute. 2 times 1 half gives me just plain old x. 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds y equals negative 4. Okay, so that's looking better. I want to get rid of that 4 thirds though. So now what I can do is multiply by 3. When I do, I get 3x plus 4y is equal to negative 12. Okay, so that's my first equation. My second equation I'm going to bring down. So this is now my system. I have a few different options here. I can use substitution. I can use elimination. Now what I notice is that the numbers in front of the x are the same. They're not different signs, but they're the same number. So what I can do is I can multiply this top equation by a negative 1. When I do, I'll have a positive 3x and a negative 3x. So top equation, I get negative 3x minus 4y is equal to positive 12. So all I did was distribute that negative 1. Bottom equation stays the same. And now I'm going to add. Now if I do this correctly, one of the variables should drop out. Which it does, we can see those x's drop out. I get negative 5y is equal to 30. Dividing by negative 5, I get y is equal to negative 6. Now, I can plug that negative 6 into one of the two original equations or my later system to find x. I'm going to use this equation right here. So, I end up with 3x minus y is equal to 18. So be careful there. That minus a negative becomes a positive. If I subtract 6, I get 3x equals 12 and x equals 4. So my final answer being 4, negative 6. Again, this is the point of intersection between those two lines. So if we were to graph them, they would intersect at the point 4, negative 6. This is also the only value that is true in both equations at the same time. Okay, so now let's look at the next example. Next example, what I notice in the bottom equation right away is I almost have y solved for. Almost. If I divide by 4, I'm going to have y alone. On the right side, I get negative x minus 3. This is really convenient. I've set myself up for substitution. So now what I can do is this negative x minus 3 can go in for y in the first equation. So remember with substitution, you always got to substitute back into the other equation, not the same equation. So I get 3y plus 3x is equal to 6. Again, though, instead of y, I'm going to put that negative x minus 3. So now I distribute. I get negative 3x minus 9 plus 3x equals 6. Okay, so this one's a little funky. What I notice is those x's are going to cancel each other out. 
So I get negative 9 is equal to 6. Now, this is clearly a false statement. So if you remember from the previous page, a false statement means that we have no solution. So graphically, no solution means that our two lines never intersect. So our two lines never intersect. Looking at the equations, it is not possible for both equations to be true at the same time for the same x and y. So hopefully that helped. Thank you for staying on for an extra few minutes with me. If you have any questions, please make sure you write them down and bring them to class.